please help me welcome our Region 4 advisor, Ed Meisner. I worked really hard at bringing the Texas weather with me, and I succeeded, but Minnesota overcame me this morning. <laughs> we're going to talk about our clubs, and we're going to talk about adding value to our members and recruiting members. And we want to add value to our members because that's why they stay. Do you remember? when the U.S. government was buying hammers for $700. Yeah, a few of you remember that. If you were to pay $700 for a hammer, what would you want it to do? <coughs> yeah, get it better wash my clothes, dry my clothes, hang them up, mow my lawn, and fix my fence, right? <laughs> Value is important to every one of us today. And we want value for our time and our money. And when we see value, we love it, right? So when a member sees value in their club, they're going to stay there. And when a guest sees value, when they visit your club, what's going to happen? They're going to join. If a member is no longer receiving value, what's going to happen? They're going to go away. So we're going to talk about a number of things today focused on value. And then we're going to talk about recruiting members. So we're going to take a holistic view of club quality focused on value. And we're going to start outside and see how that works, or the inside of the club. So does Toastmasters offer a product? Mm -hmm. What is that product? <coughs> and personal growth. And we offer them the opportunity to learn leadership skills and communication skills. What is the club mission? Can anybody give me that? <laughs> Tell you what, let's recite it together. We offer a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in self confidence and personal growth. Wow, that tells you what Toastmasters is all about in a nutshell, doesn't it? If a guest sees this or hears this, they're going to know exactly what everybody's there for and what they get out of it. Now, self-confidence, we all kind of have a great understanding of that. Personal growth, well, that gets defined a little bit differently for different people, right? To one person, personal growth means a promotion at work. To another person, it means that when they go to church, and they're on that committee, they're able to lead that committee and do a great job. To another person, it means, you know, when I go home and I talk to my spouse, we're gonna have a better relationship. So personal growth is where things get a little bit muddy and we need to work hard at helping our members get there. And we need to understand what personal growth means to each and every one of our members so that we can help them get that. That's how they're going to see value. Well, let's take a look at the club meeting and the product value in the meeting. When you walk into a club and you walk into the room, what do you see that you tells you screams value? Uh, yeah, people are not well organized, uh, having already set up. So if the sheets on the table are just jumbled around, you're going to get the impression it's not organized well. Or if the room is not laid out already neat and ready to go. Maybe I'm not going to get value here because these guys are not prepared, right? 
So preparation is very, very important. Having a great meeting is very, very important. What's another thing? I think somebody alluded to that. And that's the people. Being welcomed, right? So you walk in and somebody's there to greet you. All of a sudden you know that this group is on the ball. And what tells you even more? They take you and introduce you to the president of the club. So already you feel welcome. You feel like you're in the right place. Now you're introduced to the president of the club. How does that make you feel? Important, right? Wow, I got to meet the president of the club. I must be important to them. Then the next step is the president very slyly writes down their name <laughs> on the agenda. And when the president stands up at the beginning of the meeting, they welcome each guest by name and clap for each guest. Once again, now the whole club knows their names, and that makes them feel even more important, that they are welcome and that this is a great place. And that the members talk to them ahead of the meeting makes them feel welcome. If you walk in and everybody is sitting at their table like a bump on the log and not talking to you, do you feel like you're in the right place? No. Is that a place you want to stay? No. We've got to talk to our guests and welcome them, make them feel welcome. That is so important. And of course, you want the guests to sign in on the guest book, right? Why? Contact, so that you can call them or email them after the meeting saying, we are so glad you came. Here is my experience in Toastmasters and the value I have gotten from it. I am sure you're going to receive the same value and we welcome you back to our next meeting, which is on blah, 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 date, location, time, so that they can come. And we would love to have you come again. Here are the details about joining our club. Now, when the president welcomes you by name, after he finishes welcoming you by name, what does he do? You want the president to put those guests on notice, saying, there is going to be a quiz at the end of the meeting for you. And that question is going to be, what did you think about our meeting? Why does the president want to put the guest on notice? They're prepared, makes them comfortable. They don't feel like they got put on the spot at the end of the meeting, right? Now, if the guest is on notice at the beginning of the meeting, they're more likely to pay attention during the meeting. They're more likely to enjoy the meeting and become engaged. And then they're more likely to join the club afterwards. What's another sign that this is a great meeting? You sit down and there's an agenda in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if that agenda has a lot of blanks in it, what are you going to think? Yeah. I'm not going to get value out of it. But if every blank is full and there's a person's name for every responsibility, you take a look at it and go, wow, this is great. Well. I know meetings don't exactly run that way, do they? <laughs> Somebody drops out. <laughs> Somebody can't make it. So when the Toastmaster stands up and they begin their portion of the meeting, what's the first thing they do? There are a couple of changes to the agenda. Let me tell you about those. And that Toastmaster has gone around before the meeting talking to the members saying, Joe couldn't make it today. Janice, could you take that spot? Jordan? Would you fill in as our grammarian today because John was not able to be there? And when you have that changes there, they go, wow. They're quick on their feet. They made this agenda work even though some people were not able to be there. And they were able to tell us exactly what was going to happen. This is a club that has that going on. This is professional. I can get value here. And of course, you want your meetings to be fun, right? 
You want them to be engaging, and you want people to learn something there. Because if I'm not taking something home as a member or a guest, I'm not coming back. So every role on our agenda provides value. I know it doesn't necessarily seem like that, but it's true. It provides value to our Toastmasters members. And so you want to think about what is that value? What do you learn from that? And how does it provide value? If you have an item on your agenda that is not providing value, it should be eliminated. Let's take a look at some of these and how they provide value. Toastmaster role. When you are the Toastmaster, the week before, you already know that you're going to be the Toastmaster and you know who has the roles, right? Because they've been assigned, hopefully. Or people have signed up for those roles. So now it becomes your responsibility as Toastmaster to send out that blast email. So the meeting is on Monday. Tuesday, you send out the email. And you list everybody's role. And please respond back if you're going to mediate the meeting. And tell me about your speech what the title is, how long is it, what project is it, and what do you get back? You get maybe two people responding, yeah, I'll be there. Now, in every club, you have to develop a culture, and it takes time to develop that culture. So if you started doing it this week, how long would it take before it becomes a culture where everybody starts responding? More likely four to six months, yes. That is exactly right. So you send out that first email, you get two responses. What do you do next? That, or you send out individual emails. Because if it's an individual email to me, all of a sudden, it's something that is a little bit more important. I feel like it's important to me. Maybe I'll look at it. And so you get more responses. And then come Friday, you still haven't gotten some responses. It's time to call, right? <laughs> Find out if they're going to be at the meeting. Find out if they can fulfill the role. Please let me know what your project is, what the title is, how long is your speech. And you line up your evaluators, your major and your minor stakeholders at the meeting. So who are the major stakeholders in the meeting? <laughs> Toastmaster your table topics master, and your general evaluator, right? And the minor stakeholders, well, and your speakers, I'm sorry. Your minor stakeholders are your evaluators and your helpers. Exactly. Now, what is the value that the Toastmaster gets out of this by being Toastmaster? The opportunity to lead others, so they learn how to lead. They learn how to gain the commitment of the major and the minor stakeholders in the meeting. They learn how to create an agenda, and they learn how to lead that meeting successfully. So it accomplishes its purpose. This sets them up for success when they walk into the office and they lead a meeting successfully there making sure that everybody's lined up well ahead of time and they're providing the things that are needed for that meeting. And what does the boss do? They take notice, don't they? That person may be leading a few more meetings after that, won't they? <laughs> that is so important. Being Toastmaster actually provides you value. Well, let's take a look at general evaluation. So what is the role of the general evaluator? They lead the portion of the meeting where the evaluations happen and the reports are given, right? And then they give a general evaluation of the meeting. How many of you heard about the C it used to be CEO of Costco? Excellent. The CEO of Costco would every day go and visit a Costco club. Every day. So he would pop his jet, 
and go to a club. And he would walk into that club and walk through the entire club with the entire staff. And he knew where every sign was supposed to be. He knew what every price for every product was supposed to be. And as they walked through that, if something wasn't right, he notified them. He says, that sign is not there. It should be over here. He was a general evaluator, wasn't he? Being the general evaluator, you take notice of everything going on, of the people you are leading, and of this entire meeting. And it's your job to say, well, right, so that we know how to repeat that, and what we can improve upon. You can take this, and just like the CEO of Costco, if you're a manager leading a group of people, you end up having to be a general evaluator, don't you? Well, you get that practice in Toastmasters. And when you get that practice in Toastmasters, you're able to take that out into the real world and apply it so that you don't walk into a situation like that cold, not knowing what to do. <clears throat> You get value from being a general evaluator. You learn how to be a general evaluator. We're going to do an exercise. <laughs> and there's some things that I want you to think about. A, what is the value? How can you use it in the real world? How does that item provide value? And how can you add more value to that role in Toastmasters, okay? We're going to break up and we're going to take, uh, let's see. All right. I'm going to combine this table here with the table in the back. So the middle table and the back table. Y'all will take the role of evaluator. Then these two tables take table topics master, back table lexicologist. Now a lexicologist takes care of the word of the day. All right? So in a number of clubs, we have so many members, 43 of them, that we have to start breaking roles into two pieces so that we can have enough roles for all of our members to have a role so that everybody gets a chance to speak during the meeting. So we take grammarian and lexicologist and break them up into two roles, and the grammarian takes care of the proper use of the English language, our front table here. You have five minutes. Go.
take it to work and you learn how to be a great evaluator, how to motivate and excite that employee to take that next step. Let them know what they've done well and how exactly to word the recommendations. I recommend, I suggest, what would make your job and your results better for me would be if you did this. So wonderful way to do that. And we get evaluations every day, just like Jordan said. How many of you have ever heard, I don't like this spaghetti? <laughs> it's an evaluation. Maybe not a particularly effective one, but an evaluation. And when we can give effective evaluations, it improves our lives and the lives of the people around us. Excellent. Let's hear from the table topics. <laughs> <laughs> he is a table topics master. That was a great question. <laughs> a table 
topics master needs to think off the top of their, they, right off the top, what up questions am I going to ask? And we want to connect with the audience. And one of the things I feel, whenever I ask a question as a table topic master, if I asked a question that didn't get answered, they couldn't answer it effectively. I feel like I missed the mark. When we look at networking opportunities, we're hoping like, with people we've never met before, asking good questions that are open-ended enough that they can speak for a couple minutes and not tell a whole story. So for networking perspective, having a connection with the audience, and then also be able to think on your feet to amend your next question. Maybe that last person had a good question or had a good answer that you can include into your next question. You have extra time adding more questions at the end. And lastly, if we have good questions that have good transitions. If somebody gives a two minute response, a good table topics master develops a skill that have a good short transition, not another two minutes table topics. <laughs> Summary, summarizing something they like to add. So I think between networking, thinking on your feet, and connecting with the audience. Excellent, exactly. <laughs> when you word a question properly and succinctly, you get the answers that you're looking for, don't you? When you happen to be the boss in that elevator, you have got to ask the correct question the right way to get the answer you want by the time you get to your floor from that employee, don't you? If you happen to be in a social setting and you are in a group of people, you need to connect with that wallflower to draw them out to answer a question and draw them into the conversation. So connecting with your audience is so important. Everything you said was excellent. So that is the value you can take from that and apply it in the real world. And that's what Toastmasters is all about. We're getting value in our club setting that we can take and apply it in the real world. Well, let's talk about lexicologists. <laughs> so I learned today was a word of the day for us because I did not know what lexicologist means. So now I can at least come away from this meeting knowing a new word. Um, what we were talking about is how we enjoy the word of the day almost more than anything else because it allows us to expand our vocabulary. A lot of us, if you're not into reading, you don't expand your horizons. If you didn't get a full, like there's plenty of postmasters who didn't go to college, they didn't have any higher education. And so the way for them to expand their horizons, to expand their vocabulary, is to have the word of the day. Now, I used to belong to a club where if you didn't use the word of the day in your table topics, you didn't qualify for the vote. So it would make you learn how to say it. And I mean, it didn't always work because there's plenty of times where I couldn't figure out how to use the word, so I just said the words qualify. <laughs> <But the goal laughs> to use it properly. <laughs> and I don't see that very often out here um, in the clubs that I've been to. So I, I do think it would be great if people start doing that. Even if you don't vote, just challenge them more to use that word so you can use it outside and in an environment where you can use it wrong and not get judged for it. Exactly. And so what happens when you're outside somewhere and you use the word properly? People like that smart. You, you sound about? smart. People are more likely to listen to you. They're more likely to think highly of you. When you're in a business situation, that's so important. Let's talk about grammarian. Also in a business situation, very important is correct use of the language, proper grammar in our speaking. We are judged on that many, many times in many different situations. For the members, the value of the grammarian role is focusing on that proper use of the language, correcting errors as they occur. The point was made for many of our members, English is not their first language. They are very much learning to speak the language as part of their postmaster's journey, the grammarian role very helpful in that situation. Also for others who just are not seeking in proper use of grammar necessarily. You know. For the grammarian, many of us are called on to give various types of evaluations in our lives in different settings. Grammarian role focuses you on paying attention 
to what a person is saying. The properly viewed grammarian, we need to focus on the actual words the person is using, the things they're actually saying, not making assumptions that lead to so often. <clears throat> and also gears you towards providing feedback in a way that the person is going to accept and they're going to find actual. That is correct. And so when I'm outside and I say, when I doesn't speak properly, all of a sudden, hick, <laughs> right? That becomes the first thought in their mind. So you make an impression when you speak to people. And that first impression is so important. Proper grammar helps you when you speak to others. It is so important. Well, now let's talk about taking this to the next level. How can you add more value to some of these roles? We're going to talk about two of them. Lexicologists. What about the web link to dictionary.com? It has a little button on that website where you can touch it and you can hear the correct pronunciation and examples of how to properly use it. Wouldn't that be great for your grammarian? Wouldn't that be great for your members? You might be able to put that on your website and they could go to dictionary.com and that way then when they choose a word, they can help the members take that next step in proper use of that word. Same thing with grammarian. There is a web link for a book called Elements of Style. This is the Bible of grammar. And it's by authors Strunk and White. Strunk and White, Elements of Style. You can download this, I believe, for free. I don't know. Uh, and this would be an older version of it in PDF form. Or on Amazon in paperback, six bucks. It's dirt cheap, and your grammarian can really help your members take their grammar to the next level. Providing extra value to your members, and your guests will see this. Let's add value. Because we pay $45 every six months, plus club dues. We want value for what we're getting. Let's take this to the next value to make sure that our members walk home with value. When they walk home with value, they're going to stick around. Meeting aids is another way to add value. I was at a club where they did something similar, and this is a speech evaluation sheet. In one of my home clubs, we have this, and these items up here at the top are all taken from, guess what? <coughs> exactly, the speech contest ballot. <laughs> you got it. And you can tick off if they had excellent or somewhat less. And then we have a section down here for what I like and what would have made the speech better for me. I have kept every one of these that I've gotten, and every member fills out one when I give a speech. Mm -hmm. So I give a speech, and I get a verbal evaluation, and I get 20 of these. Wow. That has helped me improve so dramatically, so much faster than I otherwise would. It made a difference to me. So adding value to your members by doing something like this can help them. And there are a lot of different ideas out there. This is not the only one. I'm trying to get you to think out of the box to add value for your members. Ensuring value. We talked about officer training today, right? Clubs that get their officers trained have better clubs and offer more value generally to their members. Those clubs are more successful and their members tend to be happy. Leadership training. Y'all have TLIs, right? Getting your club members and officers to that is important as well. Make sure that that leadership training offers value to them. They will walk away loving you for that. And of course, the administrative care planning, execution, 
Regular officer meetings. How many of your clubs don't hold officer meetings once a month? How many of your clubs hold officer meetings only once a quarter or once a year? An officer meeting once a month should happen if you have a club that meets every other week or every week. I highly recommend it because now the officers can talk about a number of different things. And I'm going to show you here what we should do on that. And then, of course, going through the moments of truth is an excellent way to see where your club is at and what your members think of your club and what things you might be able to change. Planning. You have the club success plan. Guess what the club success plan is? Oh, it's oh, it is a microcosm of what you see in top level C suite offices of Fortune 500 companies. That club success plan is formulated off of the success plans that these C-suite offices go through. You get a view into a CEO's office when you create a club success plan. That's leadership training right there, isn't it? It talks about communication. Whenever a new member comes in to a C-suite, they talk about how they're going to communicate with each other. They need to know what the important communication style is for each and every officer. That way, there's no confusion later on saying, well, you didn't email me. Remember, we agreed to do everything by text. Ah, <laughs> how decisions are going to be made? Do you vote on it? Does the CEO determine how it's going to go? Or does the CEO say, well, finance officer, this is your area. You make the decision. I want the CFO to do this. I want the COO to do this. And then plans. Who, what, when, and the measure of success. In our club success plan, a lot of this is for the plans. The DCP, of course, but there's even more to it, plans that they can make. This can really change a club if they work this club success plan. Let them know where this came from, how important it is for them to participate in it, and that they get a view into what happens in real corporations, because later on, they may be involved with a success plan in a company. Officer meetings. In your officer meetings, of course, there's the regular club business, right? There's the DCP, right? They need to regularly review how they're doing on the DCP and who's going to achieve what goal. Meeting quality. This is so important for the club officers to talk about, that meeting quality, how they can improve the meetings, how they can make the meetings better so that members walk away with more, more value every day. How about the member education progress? Sometimes you have members and you don't know why they stopped making progress on their goals, right? The officers talk about that and then go talk to that person and say, hey, you know, I noticed you haven't given a speech in four months. Can you tell me why? Sometimes it's as simple as, I've gotten stuck on this one project and I don't know what to talk about. That can be easily fixed, can't it? Well, let's sit down and talk about that project. You know, I've done that project before, and so let's talk about the title, what topic you're gonna to deal with and how to do it. So member education progress, and then always how to orient the new members. What are you doing for new member orientation? The member needs to know certain things when they join a club, don't they? What are their responsibilities to the club? What is the club's responsibility to them? How do I sign up for a speech? And of course, moments of truth. 
First impressions. Are the guests warmly greeted? Guest book. We talked about that. Professionally arranged meeting room. Convenient meeting locations. You know, if a guest can't find where you meet, you're never going to have a guest. Sometimes it's as simple as putting a map on your website of the building and where that meeting room is so that they can find it. Good directions always help. Guests invited to address the club. We talked about that. Guests invited to join. If I walk into a club and nobody asks me to join, hmm, I must not be that important to them. I must not be wanted. Everybody wants to feel desired and desirable, don't they? It's just a simple, we would love to have you join our club. Will you join us? You don't have to give them a high-pressure sale. It's just a very simple, we would love to have you join our club. Will you join us? And then it's up to them. And some of your members and your VPM membership can do that after the meeting is over in talking with that guest, helping them continue to make them feel welcome. New membership orientations, we talked about that. Assignment of a mentor, that's important. Mentoring programs can make a difference. Talk about the education programs and the learning needs. What are they trying to learn when they're in Toastmasters? What are their near-term objectives? <coughs> Do they just want to learn to speak better? Do they want to learn how to use humor in their speeches? What do they want to learn? And you can work with them to help them. How are speaking rules designed? And make sure that the members are involved in the club's activities. Program planning. You have a program, an agenda, publicized in advance. That always helps. Sometimes that doesn't happen, I understand. Members know their program responsibilities. All projects are manual projects. Well, in this case, they're now pathways projects, yes. Meetings begin and end on time. It's important to respect the member's time. When you respect their time, they respect you. Creative table topics. What are some fun table topics ideas? You one where you have like, lots of leadership cards. Yeah. And you just basically have, have someone draw a card and say, tell us how this applies to your life or your business or whatever you have to do. And I would kind of do a question of like, how could you approve doing that? Or how could you, how does this exempt you? you know, uh, how do you identify with this, this particular thing? That's right. <laughs> There's the continuing story. There's the grab bag method. You pull an item out of the grab bag and you are an archaeologist and have to tell what this used to work, how it used, what it was for. You pick a penny out of the bag, and there's a date on it. And you either have to lie or tell a story about what happened in that year. <laughs> there are lots of creative table topics out there. Google it, and you will find many different kinds of table topics. Sure. Topics Master had a variety of different handouts that he gave. He said one person could be a model, one person's going to talk about being a sports enthusiast, one person's going to talk about being a fisherman. So people came up and then they answered the questions that were in their slip or in their envelope. It was most hilarious table topics events that we ever had. Excellent. That can go to having creative, fun meetings, people thinking on their feet. So creative tabletop is important. Positive and helpful evaluations. If you do not have great evaluations, your speeches are going to suffer. For, to get a great club, you need great evaluations. And from great evaluations comes great speeches, comes a great club. Now, there's a little bit more to it, but those that's a lot of how it works. Excellent evaluations are going to help. And you don't want to whitewash the evaluation <coughs> because there's always something that would have made the speech better for you personally. And let them know that. What would have made the speech better for me would be if, and when you express it that way, because your evaluation is your opinion, right? They will understand and they won't take it wrong. Membership strength. 
club has 20 members or more. Well, golly gee whiz, every six months, a club loses 10 to 20% of their members. If a club has 20 members, what's 20%? Four, right? Oh my gosh. What item is that on the DCP? <laughs> number seven and number eight, right? Because in the next six months, they're gonna lose another four members, and they need to gain that to keep an ideal club strength of 20 or more. <laughs> members retain. How do you get keep your members? You know, if a member misses three meetings, somebody ought to call them or email them and say, hey, we've missed you. You're an important part of our club. You know, what's going on? It may be that they have travel or vacation or something significant has happened in their life. And they may need a little help or support. Promotion of club in the community and within its, within its organization. We're going to talk about this a little bit later. Club programs, varied and exciting. How about a backwards meeting, for example? Or a debate meeting. You only need six members available to have a debate meeting. Three on one side, three on the other. Cake is better than pie. The first person in each team, you get five minutes to prepare for it. The first person on each team gives the introduction. So you have introduction on this side, introduction on that side. Then a five to seven minute speech for the body on each side, one after the other. And then the conclusion, a two to three minute speech. Oh my gosh, that's almost a complete club meeting, right? <laughs> Table topics, evaluations, and speeches. So there's a lot of things that you can do to have fun, and so vary those meetings around a little bit. Now, you might not want to have a backwards meeting in an open house, right? <laughs> You're going to confuse the heck out of your guests, and they're going to walk away going, I still don't know what Toastmasters is all about. Toastmasters sponsoring new members, recognized. So when somebody brings a guest, make sure that the person who brought that guest is recognized. One way or another, whenever you get a pat on the back, that makes you more likely to do something positive again. And regular membership building programs. I recommend holding an open house every three months. Because you've got to continually bring new members in and replace the members that you've been losing. We'll talk a little bit about this. In a minute. Recognizing accomplishments. Always, when somebody gets an education award, bring them up to the front of the room and recognize them with a certificate. Progress chart. Member achievements formally recognized. Club and district international leaders recognized. Club and member achievements publicized. One of my clubs, when somebody achieves an education goal, Everybody in the club gets a letter or an email from the president saying, let's congratulate Joe. And all of a sudden you see emails pop back and forth from everybody. That's so encouraging. Mm -hmm. DCP is used for planning and recognition. Fellowship. I have a club that has post toasties on a regular basis. So after our club meeting, once a month, we'll get together and go out to a pub and have some food and a drink and learn a little bit more about each other. This is how you become family. And families stay together, don't they? That's how you make those members stay. So, you guys know a little bit about that. Let's talk about window dressing. Oh boy, I'm gonna be behind. So, window dressing. When you walk into a mall and you walk by a window and the mannequins are all on a tumble Half of them are torn apart, and the clothes are thrown around. What do you think about that? <laughs> right. The quality of the product I'm getting in that store is very questionable. It's the same way with your club, that window dressing. So the banner outside the door, making sure that there's clear directions to where the meeting is. All these things are window dressing. Make sure that people see that. When you have a banner with a lot of ribbons on that, what does that tell the guests? That they've done a lot of, they're active. They're active and they have a lot of awards. I might learn something here. 
So window dressing is important. Let's go to the next step and talk a little bit more about that. Club banner and signs, the meeting space, the guests and members, we've talked about that. Closing the sale, we've talked a little bit about that. Now let's go to the billboard. What's your billboard for your club? Website. The website, what else? Social media. Social media. Word of mouth. badge. Flyers, magazines, other material, that's also your billboard. So when you put a flyer out, it's so important. If the correct way to put a flyer out is to dress professionally, when you walk into that restaurant, who do you ask for? The manager. Why? They're the decision maker. That's exactly it. <clears throat> When you meet the manager, it is so important to let them know who you are and what Toastmasters is all about. Hi, I'm Ed Meissner. I'm from Preston Persuaders Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people improve their communication and leadership skills. In a nutshell, you told them that Toastmasters is nonprofit and what Toastmasters is about. When they hear that it's nonprofit, they're more likely to post your flyer. When they hear what Toastmasters is all about, they're more likely to post your flyer. And then you say, maybe put this flyer up in your window. The first comment you're going to get back is, oh, I'm sorry, we're only going to leave it up for three weeks. What's your response? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. Where may I place the flyer? Why, where may I place the flyer? Because if you hand it to the manager, what happens? That's right. File nine. <laughs> I have never been turned down for placing a flyer. You can place them in stores, restaurants, uh, other businesses, and people walk by, make sure that the information on that flyer is everything that's necessary. Club meeting, date, time, location, and place, contact information, email, and phone number, and person. That way they just sit there with their phone, snap a picture, and they walk away with that information. Your website. Make sure it is always up to date. But when I say up to date, once a week. You need to post to your website once a week. Otherwise, it falls in the search criteria. And people take a look at it, and if they see a website that's out of date, what do they think? Yeah, are they still meeting? This is an old, dead website, right? I don't need to go here. <coughs> So update the website once a week, because if you update it once a week, and you can post pictures of the winners, uh, how the meeting went, who the gained the awards, anything, keep posting what our next upcoming meeting is and the date and time, it makes a difference. Facebook, when you go to social media, how often do you need to deal with social media? Daily. Daily, that is exactly right. So get your club members involved. Have one person say, oh, here's a word of the day. Another person say, here's a thought of the day. Another person say, I am looking forward to next week's meeting because this last week's meeting was fabulous. Another person posting who the winners were. And also make sure they know how to get to the club from Facebook. <laughs> Meetup. If you use Meetup, it works really great. You need to use it like a website. You need to post once a week because people who are following your Meetup group get an email when you post. And so if they're getting that thing once a week, they know that you're active and they'll come. And then your Toastmasters badge. I take it into Walmart with me. What's the first question that happens when I take it into Walmart? Toastmasters. No. Where's, Where's the toilet paper, right? <laughs> <laughs> and when they say, where's the toilet paper? There's your opening. I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm with Toastmasters. Then you get the question, Where is the, what is Toastmasters? <laughs> and you have an opening that is absolutely fabulous. Give them your elevator speech. Toastmasters is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping people improve their leadership and communication skills. And it has changed my life. And then tell them very shortly how it's changed your life. You don't want uh, 10 paragraphs. You want a very short answer, one to two minutes. They will listen to you. What else do you need when you 
wear that badge in Walmart. So, a business card, right? With your meeting date, time, location, contact information. And you can hand that to them so that they can always contact you later on. Out of every 10 people you talk to that way, approximately one of them will come visit your club. Flyers and magazines. Where would you stick a magazine? Lunchroom. Lunchroom? Where else? Library. Library. Where else? Laundry mat. Doctor's offices. Right? Your hairdresser. And other literature. They have trifolds that are nice. I recommend if you want to put one of those out somewhere, a restaurant is great for those, but leave no more than three because people will take them. But if you leave more than three, they'll throw the rest away. And always ask if you can leave those there. Magazines and everything. So we've talked about that. Here's an example of a flyer. If you want flyers, ask Kimberly. Ask Dave. They have flyers. And your clubs can use these. I recommend handing out five to a club. And if they put those out, they'll usually get one response from that. Websites, we talked about that. Toastmasters badge, we talked about that. Let's talk about corporate open houses. I recommend an open house once every three months. And in a corporation, one of the great open houses that usually gets a lot of guests and up to six members per meeting a lot of times, is invite the president of the company or one of the VPs to come and talk and give them a topic. Give them 10 to 15 minutes. They may take 25. That's okay. <laughs> but you want them to talk about the importance of communication and leadership skills the first time. Three months later, you want a different executive, and you want them to talk about how communication skills has changed my life. Another person. How leadership skills have changed my life. You invite everybody who works for the president of that company when you invite the president. Why? What's going to happen? Here I am, boss. They want to be seen, right? And then the boss is standing up there talking about the importance of communication skills and leadership skills at a Toastmasters meeting, which, by the way, is very heavy-handed. What is he doing? Oh, Toastmasters is good, right? <laughs> He's blessing it. And not only that, if he wasn't a supporter before, unaware to him, he is, or her, whoever it is, by the way, they are becoming a supporter of Toastmasters. Make sure that you publicize this and you want the publicity to be everywhere. You want to invite everybody who works for them, and you want them to know who is going to be there speaking. Because if they don't know that the president of the company is going to be there, or the CEO, are they going to show up necessarily? No. And let them know it's an open house. You want a second speaker. And that second speaker gives a five to seven minute speech about what you get in Toastmasters, what the costs are, and how it works. You do one or two table talks very quickly, so they see that, so they're going to see a whole meeting, right? And you give one evaluation. Who do you evaluate? The second speaker, right? Your CEO might be slightly sensitive, and you don't want to truly offend them. You want to have a party atmosphere. You want to have some food, some goodies. And each and every officer needs to know how to fill out that membership form and take the money. Why? If you have seven people who want to join, how long are they going to wait in line? Two minutes. So if every officer knows how to take that membership application and fill it out and help that guest, then you've got your deal. And you want all seven officers to stand up front at the end and say, you know, if, you, if you're interested in joining or being a member, talk to one of us. 
and wear a hat or something where they can easily identify you. Yeah, you want to be singled out very easily so that they can come talk to you. And have one of them standing at the door so people can't get out <laughs> without <laughs> passing by them, right? <laughs> so preparation is key here. <clears throat> Promotion is even more important. Now, a community open house works a little bit the same way, but different, and it's more difficult. For that, your guest speaker that you want is going to be either a CEO of a local corporation could be the fire chief, could be the police chief, could be the mayor. Now, if you're inviting the mayor, what year do you not want to invite the mayor? <laughs> exactly, because you're going to get a stump speech. Give them the same sort of thing and invite people who work for them. Even It doesn't hurt. So you can post the open house at all the fire houses around if the fire chief is going to speak. Some of them may join. Promotion, it's much more difficult. Where do you advertise? Coffee house news, laundromats. Try and get it in the local newspaper. Now newspapers, radio, uh, radio stations, and TV stations all have websites. And on their website, what do they have? A community calendar, right. And on that community calendar, you want to put your event. Not everybody checks that, but enough people do that they might come. So make sure you get it everywhere you possibly can, and this is where those flyers come in handy. And once again, every officer needs to be prepared to take the money and take an application and fill it out. They need to know how. Have the party atmosphere. And then if you can, you want some publicity after the event. In rural communities, this works out great because you can get a newspaper article out there ahead of time and they'll put it in the newspaper. And then at the event, you want a picture. You want a picture with that guest speaker and all of your members and guests. Because your members and guests are locals and they love to publicize pictures of locals and then identify each and every person in that picture and write an article with it. That makes a difference. These open houses work. In the corporate open houses, I have seen six members join multiple times. One time they had seven members join, which I was seriously impressed with. <laughs> membership drives. Let's talk about a membership drive. On a membership drive, a great way to do a membership drive is to divide your club into two teams. The red team and the blue team. You want it to run for six to eight weeks, and you want a point system for this, and you want it to be kind of friendly. So if they that team brings a guest, they get one point. If the guest shows up a second time, they get a second point. If the guest joins, they get three points. And it's a competition. It makes friendly competition fun. And at the end, there's a prize. You know, it doesn't have to be an awful lot. Sometimes bragging rights works. <laughs> How about a pizza for the wedding team? Or it could be almost anything. It doesn't have to be a lot. And a lot of times that can come out of the club budget if there's room. I recommend doing a membership drive every once in a while because it gets your members into the idea of publicity. And if you teach them how to wear their badge, how to do this, how to do that, how to talk to people about Toastmasters and give their success story about Toastmasters, they're going to be able to bring guests. 